Hello, my name is Anna van Raalte. I'm product manager for Moleflow. I want to talk to you about the Moleflow 2018.0 release. The 2018.0 release is the third release in a row that we made available in a, uh, in a quarter. So um, the it started off in the October timeframe last year when we made the 2017.R2 available with new functionality in, uh, in there. Uh, and then we, this was followed with a 2017.3 release in January and now uh, this quarter we released the 2018.0 uh, release. In terms of new functionality, we grouped these things in, in three buckets, uh, market impact, technology leadership, and uh, productivity and, and user uh, improvements. And I'll go through those in, in different sections. In terms of market impact, we're looking at uh, making technology available uh, that, that allow people to solve new problems uh, and, and things that people have been looking for for us to add in, in the last couple of years. So uh, the first of those is basically we made uh, Helios PFA, which is our, our nonlinear linear structural interface available on a Moleflow Inset Ultimate subscription license. So if you have a subscription license for Moleflow Inset Ultimate on active subscription, you will also get access to Helios PFA. Uh, this would allow you to run uh, nonlinear structural analysis in Abacus and Ansys, or uh, evaluate things like the, the strength of, of weld lines um, as part of the, the new Moleflow Inset Ultimate license. So if you have a Moleflow Inset Ultimate on a uh, maintenance license, the traditional maintenance would not have provide access to Helios PFA, but the new term-based subscription license does. We also made some changes in the, the way uh, the, the, the MOLFO results are now synchronized with the Helios PFA results. So uh, in case we make thing, uh, changes to, let's say, the fiber orientation that will uh, affect the change the, the predictive prediction of the fiber orientation, this would also have to be uh, calibrated with Helios PFA. So now we've put mechanisms in place to make sure that uh, the, the MOLFO version and the Helios version are, are properly tied together. We also made some improvement in terms of the um, uh, the way we uh, look at uh, the parametric studies and, and design of experiments, particularly with the, in the context of design changes. In the 2017.2 release or R2 release, we made uh, the, the villa we provided the new functionality in terms of the ability to make design changes in Moleflow and be able to, to to drive those design changes through a parametric study. Uh, now we made those uh, the parameter changes a lot more robust and uh, you can actually make much larger deformations for instance or changes to your model than uh, previously possible uh, for instance in this particular case on the bottom uh, i moved an entire boss from one location to the middle of the part uh, which is uh, probably a, a deformation that would have been too large for a the previous version of this optimization tool um, also the, like i said the the, the We've improved the robustness of the, and the speed of the, the design changes there. We also created API support for uh, the design changes. So in case you're, let's say, running optimizations uh, th with a third-party optimization code, you can now uh, program uh, the options in uh, through command line and have your uh, uh, third-party optimization code drive the design changes in Moleflow as well. Furthermore, for customers that are using uh, Linux clusters or Linux uh, machines, uh, we also added the ability to actually derive these design changes or design studies in uh, on Linux machines. In terms of productivity enhancements, uh, one of the major the deliverables for this particular release are the ability to actually start analysis directly on a CAD model. Um, traditionally speaking, Moleflow, uh, we would be creating a mesh, qualify the mesh, and then start an analysis, sort of effectively a two-step process. Um, we now will be able to start an analysis directly from a uh, CAD model. In this particular case, I imported a, a simple CAD model. I will be able to sp specify my uh, analysis sequence over here, as I usually do. I select my material. Put an injection point in place, specify my process settings, and normally I would have first have to create a, a mesh before I start an analysis, but now I can st straight away start my, my analysis uh, right from the CAD model. So 
So as an end user, this gives me extra flexibility. And say, let's say uh, at the end of the day, uh, I get a, uh, a model in um, that needs to have results very quickly, rather than going through a two-step process, having to wait bef uh, for the, the mesh to complete um, before I start an analysis, I can now like uh, do that straight from the CAD model and, and skip effectively the meshing step. Also for a, a new user, it is important uh, to, to get up to speed very quickly. Um, and it's like starting an analysis directly off a CAD model, taking away some like uh, the requirements for learning how to mesh and what to look for in a mesh, um, is going to save a lot of the time in terms of getting up to speed. You can still use the old workflows, like they're still uh, fully available within the, uh, the, the, the product, but this is an additional workflow that we have supported here. So. There are some limitations there in the first release. Uh, we will not support cool FVM in this, um, as well as in terms of Valgate support on, on beams, um, because the way the, the velvets are defined currently on the on the, 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 the models in Moleflow, it's not supported in uh, by submitting those directly off a CAD model, uh, as well as the um, in case you bring a CAD body that includes also a hot runner in that same CAD body uh, that is not uh, supported in this workflow either. In terms of the, the meshing setup, it follows the exact same uh, settings as you would normally have done in a two-step process. So you can specify your uh, the, 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 the things like your edge length or the uh, how, how you want to create your mesh, um, but you don't have to basically create a mesh first and then do the analysis. You can basically do those two steps in one 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 go. Another important improvement is that we uh, restored the support for 3D connection devices. Uh, throughout the year, we became aware that um, um, some of those connection devices did no longer were no longer working. Um, we identified the, the source of the issues and basically updated the, the driver support um, for, for this as well now. So people that are using 3D connection devices like Space Pilot and, and such are, are, do now have um, the ability to be back to, to use those devices in, in running mobile flow. A lot of people you like to use these because uh, they eliminate a lot of the mouse clicks and mouse travel that co cause uh, re re repetitive strain injuries. Um, and 3D connection devices are really excellent in, in reducing sort of those the, the risk of those injuries. In terms of technology leadership, um, we added a new uh, simulation capability inside of Moleflow. Uh, this is particularly something that came from the, the, the Japanese uh, and Chinese and uh, Korean automotive industry, where uh, we now see the use of multi-barrel injection molding sim uh, systems coming up. So for large parts, um, the, uh, this means that you have one big mold that's being injected into by completely independent injection units. So effectively, in this particular case, you would have to assume that you have three injection molding machines injecting into one straight part. So each of these particular um, injection units can be co uh, completely independent of each other. They can have completely different uh, ramp speed profiles, temperatures, uh, screw dimensions, and, and, and bar barrel dimensions. So uh, they're, they're completely independent of the master unit. So. As this is a like a fairly complex technology, uh, requirement investments, uh, a lot of customers that are interested in this technology would like to see if this is actually going to work and if it's going to pay off. And simulation can help with uh, being a deciding factor in making those investments uh, uh, calls here. We also made some improvements in the compression molding area. Uh, the first one is basically that we added the uh, capability to run uh, an overmolding process where we, the first shot is an injection molding um, shot and then an overmolding done with compression molding. In prior releases, we had the uh, already had the capability to run a compression molding with an injection injection molding, overmolding. Uh, but in, now we also have support the inverse option. So at first an injection molding and then a compression overmolding. We uh, also added the ability to um, to look at uh, um, the heat buildup in a charge when a charge is uh, sitting in a mold before the compression starts. So that heat distribution uh, uh, 
previously was assumed to be uh, uniform, but when the, the, the the, the charge is in contact with uh, certain parts of the molds, they might heat up uh, and basically have a non-uniform temperature distribution, which will affect the, the, the properties as well as the flow behavior of the part. So now that's properly taken into account in the simulation as well. Another additional change we made is the uh, created a new API uh, call for uh, that, that governs the, the solidification behavior. And this is especially done uh, in collaboration with some research partners that are interested in exploring new solidification methods uh, that could help uh, improve things like warpage. Um, so we, this is certainly not something we uh, expect everybody to start using, but this is definitely an, an, an area that we want to exploit with uh, industry partners as well as um, uh, universities to develop new technologies to, to make uh, our products better. So this is the content of the 2018.0 release. In addition to that, we also um, fixed around 200 bugs um, in this particular release. Uh, some of them were long-standing issues, and some of them were like just things that came up in the last uh, couple of releases. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy Moldflow Inside 2018.